Hello everyone and welcome to this Easter Sunday edition of our God Is series. Maybe you have heard somebody say, oh Easter, it just won't be the same this year. And that's very true because the way we celebrate Easter this year will look very different to the way that we are used to celebrating. But that got me thinking about what do we really need for a happy Easter? I wonder how you would finish this sentence. You can't have Easter without, some of you may say Easter eggs. I like Easter eggs too, see? I've got my Easter egg with me today. And many of you will have Easter eggs this year, but you might not just have as many as you usually would have. But does that mean that it can't be Easter? Some of you might say you can't have Easter without family. Maybe you're used to lots of your family joining you for a lovely dinner. That's not possible to join with, with lots of other people who don't live in our houses this year. But does that mean it can't be Easter? You can't have Easter without holidays. Some of us are used to maybe taking a few days away at Easter, maybe taking some day trips, and that's not possible this year. But does that mean it can't be Easter? Or you might say you can't have Easter without going to church, and we're not able to meet together as a church family in our church building at the minute. But does that mean that it can't be Easter? We're going to hold that thought for a few minutes. Boys and girls, I wonder if you've ever been lost. Maybe you've got lost in a park or in a shop. It's not a nice feeling to be lost. Many of you will have been in the maze at Castle Welling Park. I think it's great fun, but it's also quite difficult. The very first time I went there, I got so lost. No matter where I went, there was a dead end or I just kept going round and round in circles. I thought I would never get out again. But I was with a large group of friends and some of them had gone on ahead. They had got to the very middle, they'd finished the maze, they were on the platform and they were able to look down to see where I was and to tell me how I could get to them. They were able to give me instructions because they could see exactly where I was. And I was so thankful that they could see where I was and they could give me instructions so that I wouldn't be lost anymore. The Bible tells us that because of our sin, we are lost. We are separated from God. And in the book of Isaiah we read, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each one has turned to his own way. You see, we all have the problem of sin, the wrong things that we think, say and do that break God's laws. We go our own way instead of God's way. And the Bible tells us that because of this, we are lost from God. We're separated from God. But God loves us too much to leave us that way. I'm going to read from the book of Psalms, Psalm 18. And I want you to listen really, really carefully for the word beginning with D that we are going to use today to describe God. Psalm 18 verses 1 and 2. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Lots and lots of words there to describe God. But did you hear the one beginning with D? Deliverer. Now you might think of a postman delivering letters, but that's not what deliverer means. Deliverer means the same as rescuer. God is our deliverer or our rescuer from sin because God loved us so much that he sent his perfect son Jesus to deliver us or rescue us from sin. Now whenever I was in that maze in Castle Wellen, probably if I had spent long enough trying I would have got out by myself. It's not the same with our sin. We can't rescue ourselves from sin. We can never do enough to reach God's perfect standard. We can't do it by ourselves. And that's why God needed to send a rescuer. That's why God sent Jesus to deliver us from sin. But I was really glad that day that my friends were able to stand up high and look down and tell me exactly where to go. But whenever God sent Jesus, Jesus didn't just stand far away and give us instructions on what we should do. No, he didn't stand far away. He left heaven and came to the earth to live as one of us. But he never ever did anything wrong. He never sinned. But yet he died on a cross to take the punishment for our sin. 
imagine being in school and you did something wrong, you knew you'd done something wrong and you had to maybe stay in at break time or stay in at lunch time as a punishment. Imagine one of your friends who hadn't done this thing that you had done saying to you, no, no, it's all right, you go on out to play, I'll stay in and take the punishment for you. I'd say you might be a little bit confused about why somebody would want to do that. But what Jesus did for us was so much greater. He died to take the punishment for all the wrong things that we had done. Now, the best part of this story and the best part of the Easter story is actually inside my Easter egg. Here we go. Let's have a look. Yep, now, oh, this little piece has fallen out. Okay, are we ready? The best part of the Easter story is in there. Now you really think I've lost the plot, don't you? Because it's empty. Now we don't really like things that are empty usually, do we? I don't like it whenever my packet of sweets is empty. I don't like it whenever the petrol tank in my car is empty. Usually empty isn't good. But you see, whenever Jesus' friends went to the tomb that Jesus had been buried in, when they went there, the tomb was empty. The stone had been rolled away. And that's good news because Jesus is alive. Jesus didn't stay dead. Jesus rose from the grave. The tomb was empty. Jesus is alive. And that is the good news of Easter because that means that Jesus has the power to get rid of sin, to get rid of death forever. Jesus is stronger than sin and death. And he's alive today in heaven, preparing a place for all those who have trusted him to forgive their sin. And because Jesus is alive today, we know that we can have our sin forgiven. If we're really sorry for the wrong things that we have done and we ask God to forgive us because of what Jesus has done, our sins can be forgiven. God will forgive us. And we will know that one day when our life on this earth is over, that we have a home in heaven. We can remember that today. The tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. Now we're gonna go back to that sentence We had, you can't have Easter without. Well, I think the only answer to the filling in of the blanks is you can't have Easter without Jesus. And yes, this Easter is very different to the way we usually celebrate Easter. But no matter what is missing from your Easter today, I want you to remember that the tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. And that is what makes all the difference.